A fracture eponym is when a fracture pattern is referred to by a popularized name, perhaps named after the physician who first described them, or just a term that may best describe the fracture characteristics. You might hear eponyms thrown around, and so I wanted to go over some of the most commonly used to help get you familiarized. For today's video, we will go over common fracture eponyms for the distal radius fractures. To start, we have the Coley's and Smith fractures. These are essentially opposites of one another, with a Coley's fracture involving a dorsally displaced fracture, and a Smith's involving a ventrally displaced fracture. And just in case you needed a sort of trick to help remember the two, note that the displaced distal component moves with the direction of the hand at the time of injury, and so with an extended wrist, you see a dorsal displacement and vice versa. Then to remember that Coley's is correlated to wrist extension and Smith is correlated to injury with wrist flexion, I had a helpful memory trick. I would think of shooting a basketball and the shape the arm makes in the process. Wrist extension as you start your shot makes this sort of C shape for Coley's and the shot follow through led to wrist flexion and made this sort of S shape for Smith. Or perhaps you can think of shooting for S and Smith, whichever works for you. I know it seems a bit silly, but it worked for me early on. Next, you have the Barton fracture dislocation of the radiocarpal joint with an intraarticular fracture involving the volar or dorsal lip. A recent study said that 70% of these occurred in young male workers or motorcyclists. However, they are also commonly seen in those with osteoporosis and subsequently have a foosh injury or a fall on an outstretched hand. Finally, for this video, we have the chauffeur fracture, which is a fracture of the radial styloid. This got its name as the bony prominence was commonly struck by chauffeurs working on cars. Although I will say this one has been pretty low yield for me on rotation, nevertheless, you have now seen it and are at least aware of this eponym and that it exists. Okay, see you in the next one.